Office at Night is a 1940 painting by Edward Hopper. As a realist painter, Edward Hopper was set to capture the continuity of the time period by painting what he saw. During this time period, World War II was a, was a great impact in the working class of the economy. As many men left to war, women left to work. But during the end of the war, soldiers came back. They found themselves in a place where family farms had become obsolete and industrial jobs were dominant. Many men began to seek education and as a result, women began to lose their jobs. When I see this work by Edward Hopper, I think about her blank stare. Is she thinking about what she will do to keep her job? Or is she thinking about her kids or family? In an article in the New York Times by Catherine Shattuck, she writes, a secretary standing with her hands in the file drawer nearby, twisted in a provocative, a physically strained position, both breast and buttocks are visible. She, be, she could be looking at him, or maybe she's wondering how her skin-tight dress will allow her to stoop down to pick up the paper dropped on the floor. And if she does, what will be the outcome? Josephine Nevision is her name, Edward Hopper's model for most of his paintings. In his biography, she talks about how it, it's nice that she has good legs and upcoming stockings. In the painting, we could see that she is the main attraction as the surrounding has been painted with straight lines and corners, but when we look at her, she is smooth with beautiful curves that make her attractive. We also see the light coming in from the window, shining on her, making her the main attraction. Something that I like about Edward Hopper is that he leaves his paintings open for narrative and interpretation. One of his quotes he says, if it could be said, then there would be no reason to paint. Hello, my name is Derek Hall, and today I'll be talking to you about an artist by the name of Georgia O'Keeffe, who happens to be the first American abstractionist artist. Isn't that exciting? <coughs> <coughs> so, as I was saying, the painting I am discussing is a piece of abstract art called the Lawrence Tree that was painted in the summer of 1929 while Georgia O'Keeffe was visiting D.H. Lawrence at his Cure Ranch on her first trip to New Mexico. The tree stands just right in front of the house on that ranch. The Lawrence Tree puts you in a position where you are looking up at the branches of the tree into the open night skies while you are lying on your back. The painting is set on a unique angle to help enhance this idea. Georgia O'Keeffe said it herself in a letter to Mabel Dodge Luhan. I have one particular painting, that tree in Lawrence's front yard as you see it when you lie under it on the table, with stars. It looks as though it is standing on its head. In another letter she sent to Rebecca Strand, she said, I also got a painting on the big pine tree as you see it lying on that table under it at night. It looks as though it is standing on its head with all the stars around it. Pretty good for me. The tree has no particular form, and the stars in the night sky are small and circleish. The colors of the tree trunk and branches are brownish red. The leaves are black with small, faint, cloudy patches of gold, and the night sky is blue, and the stars are white. The lines on the tree and branches are curvy. Looking at this wonderful picture of the Lawrence tree, other than it looking like a tree, it looks like someone has opened up a portal and an enormous creature, probably a squid-like alien with tentacles, is grabbing into the emptiness of time and space. It is like it wants to be free, growing and reaching to escape a planet that is not its home. The painting makes me think of someone that is rooted like a tree, to be a certain thing but instead reaches out, growing and trying to do other things to find its identity. As it grows into unknown territories, it is experimenting with new paths of life, trying to find a path and a home that they are more comfortable with. Kind of like a college student switching majors and trying to find out what they really want to do. To conclude, I decided to say a quote from Georgia O'Keeffe that I thought fit my thoughts and interpretations of the tree in this great work of art. The quote says, I decided to start anew, to strip away what I had been taught. Thank you.